What's up, guys? I know you guys missed me. I definitely miss you guys too. It's your boy Zeph. If you didn't know, now you do know. My name is Zeph Farino, and I play Street Fighter Jazz Fingers. So today, I'm not at Evo. You're not at Evo, most likely. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching me, right? You'd probably be getting slammed right now, drinking at the table, shooting craps. I don't know what you'd be doing, but you definitely wouldn't be watching me. So what we're gonna do is we are going to have a little fun today. You know, usually they do this analysis paralysis and all that good stuff, but today I'm going to actually do uh, a nice little twist on that. I'm gonna do my Evo predictions, but you guys are still gonna learn though. That's gonna be the cool thing about it. So I have examples set up for uh, what we're gonna talk about. And today we are going to discuss my Evo top eight predictions. All right, and I believe six out of those eight predictions I have uh, video footage of. So we're gonna be watching it alongside as I discuss my reasons for X player getting into top eight uh, and also the cons potentially that could stop them from making some sort of run and achieving that feat. All right, so we're gonna get into it. Hope you guys are doing awesome. You know, I missed you guys and I haven't, and I wasn't on Monday. Um, I forgot why I wasn't on Monday. What was Monday? I don't even remember, but yeah, so I'm here now, but it's okay. We're back on track. All right, so I want to show some love to you guys. So all right, let's let's get this started. All right. What's up, Alex? All the money on CN and remember Zaf buff Chun. Absolutely, I agree with buffing Chun Li, and you know I'm gonna make some points about that later. So today, let's let's talk about it. So my top eight i said top eight oh my god thumbs don't count as fingers okay so this is technically still right my top eight prediction for evo 2018 street fighter 5 of course because i'm not making predictions for any other game right but i will say this for street fighter 5 do you guys want me to tell you my top eight now or should i reveal them as i play the videos i think i'm gonna, I'm gonna play them and reveal them all right so my number one prediction for getting top eight is gonna be our lord and savior, my father, Daigo Zafarina Umehara. He is playing so fantastic lately. That I just I just in my heart I just I just thought he he has to make it. He hasn't made top eight at Evo since was it the last year of Street Fighter 4? I don't even know if he made no, he didn't even make the top top eight of that year because he lost to I I's jury. Thank you for the follow, by the way. Teasel Path, what's up? What's up, Zav? Just finished watching training mode video. Looking forward to getting a little time to put it into practice. For sure, man. And the best thing about it is you don't have to try to do everything all in one setting. Like, just pick one thing about training mode you really want to work on, and then just practice it. That's it. All right? That's what I like. I tell you guys. It's a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You don't have to try to just stuff your bellies with everything I teach in one sitting just literally take one thing at a time and focus on it and you try to lay that brick as perfectly as possible shout outs to my mentor kaiser for teaching me that but you want to when you build the house you want to lay the brick as perfectly as possible you don't want somebody to rush through your house when they're building it right so why would you do that with your own foundation all right so just approach that not only in the game but with anything in life obviously in general right okay cool so <clears throat> so I have Daigo getting top eight. All right, so my one of my reasons is, of course, that he's fresh off of winning VS fighting, which was in, I believe, Birmingham in the UK. But it was a premier event. I don't remember exactly where it was, but it was a premier event. So you had the top of the top players that were there. Like, not many US players were there to represent, but pretty much every international player you could think of, albeit a very few, were there representing and competing. Infiltration was there. Sako was there, um, you know, all all the top dogs you could think of. Um, so he won one of the most stacked tournaments of the season, and he did it in I'd I'd say convincing fashion. He did it from winner's side. I don't. It wasn't a reset in grand finals, and who he won against was also very important. I think it's indicative of his momentum as in terms of his skill set in the game and where he is in relation to his competition. But he beat Fujimura, which I think is he is arguably top three in the world in this game. Fujimura is ridiculous. That man is like he plays the game to the most optimal level. You know, like he's not the most well rounded, but I mean in terms of exercising the strengths or, or the engine of the game, he's like one of the best. That's why it, like when you watch him, I'm I'm gonna get to him in a, in a second. 
but when you watch him and and the stuff we're going to talk about it's going to kind of all make sense when i break it down all right so i'd say that that win was very important uh, leading up to evo all right and it's kind of just demonstrates that daigo still has that vintage daigo swag to him you know he still has that confidence he still has that ability to to step into his opponent's shoes and become them you know and to just kind of control them and control their character he's he's still fantastic at that what's up tatsu monkey so i expect him to get top eight i don't know if he'll get winners top eight but actually you know i think he would get winners top eight i don't see him getting losers top eight all right i actually don't see him getting losers. if he's if he's gonna make it he's gonna make top eight winners i don't see him doing it through loser side that's just my opinion all right so uh another reason why i think that he would he has a great chance of getting there is daigo is he's very experienced in these type of tournaments where it's high stakes right i mean he's a multiple time evo champion of course and then you see that he he sh performs really well at like the tournaments that he's invited to you know like even dating to street fighter 4 when he got second place to kazunoko and the cap the last capcom cup that happened um and he's just he's very consistent and he's constantly growing his consistency lies in his growth so when somebody's constantly getting better it's only a matter of time before they succeed right i mean he has obviously succeeded but i'm just saying like in order for him to keep reaching new levels it's inevitable because of his work ethic and how studious he is that's like a common element between a lot of the people that i'm going to um put my prediction on and favor towards getting top eight is that studious nature they have because i believe in a tournament like this like evo you have to be as prepared as possible it will set you apart you know and think about it there's 2600 people competing all right give or take we'll say like a couple hundred don't show up so we'll say like 2300 people that's that's a lot of different tastes and play styles and biases and preferences that you have to battle your way through potentially you know obviously you're not gonna pay, play every one of those 2300 people but this just the the sheer possibility of you coming across so many different play styles and interpretations of the game you'd have to try to be as prepared as possible okay so i think that is very crucial um so also oh and the last fact for me is that daigo has an exceptionally great chance of placing because of his character daigo is playing guile right so guile obviously plays to his strengths he's not He's not playing a character that he's that's outside of Daigo's archetype. You know, he's not like playing a grappler or something like that. He's playing a character that he has roughly 25, 30 years of experience with. You know, that archetype of fireballs. So he has that as a cushion, as like a safety net, you know, that he can fall back on. So he knows his identity. Knowing your identity in a tournament like this is very crucial because when you do come across that play style, um, that player that you're really confused by then you can be a lot more sure that hey i can at least fall back onto something i know that i'm strong at i have 25 years of throwing a fireball at my opponent's face you know and i've won a lot of games doing that so he has that to fall back on and of course guile is top three in my opinion in the game in, in terms of the characters like he has the tool sets to play either offensively or defensively not every character can say that all right so he can play so versatile with his character that it only makes him that much more difficult to 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 read or to pin down you know so like he'll have so many options and i don't think that like i think that he has the character that can fight any character potentially so he doesn't really have a matchup he's probably worried about because i think gal can fight every character in the game you know maybe like even cammy cammy i think beats him but even that matchup you know like he still has um the opportunity to take that home you know ether what's going on brother that what up and thanks for the vids no thank you for tuning in sir because uh if you didn't tune in who would i be making these videos for you know so i'm glad you're enjoying it uh, hopefully it's contributing to your growth and let me know if you have like any ideas of stuff you'd like for me to break down all right because i'll definitely do that for you guys genesis what's going on brother all right so now as far as cons i'm gonna have to have cons because you know i don't want this to have be a stale experience i want to i want to throw out the potential things that could be detrimental you know to his, his success in my opinion of course so like my thing is with an event like this right 
will Daigo have the stamina, the mental stamina, right? Like, that's my only concern because he hasn't placed top A at Evo in, like, X amount of years, right? So, like, is it a stamina thing? Because I know that that last year for, like, um, what was it? The last year of Street Fighter 4? I don't think he definitely didn't get top 8 that year. So, like, ever since that year especially, like, the growth, like, the amount of players that have been playing in Street Fighter has been, like, has been ridiculous. You know, to the point where they started uh, instituting, like, multiple day pools. You know, remember how they used to have just pools on one day and then all of a sudden they started doing Friday and Saturday? So it's, like, it's a very long grind. And that's the one thing I'm concerned about is, like, how is Daigo Psyche in that type of uh, environment? You know, like, high stakes and uh, a, a stamina, like, um, like tournament, like a tournament like this where it, it really drains you are two very different battles. You know, you have to prepare for it very differently. So that's, like, one of the reasons why I'm hesitant on saying Daigo will get top eight. It's just because I don't know how his stamina would be in a tournament like this, you know? So um, that's one of the things that kind of like has me on the fence so the other thing is that this is another funny thing is is daigo willing to put his studious nature to the side for this tournament because that's the one thing that stops him from winning is that he is willing to even ask him even read his books or whatever he is willing to sacrifice guaranteed damage guaranteed victory for the opportunity to learn and i'm not knocking that because that's how i am all right, but that but what I'm saying is in terms of him getting top eight, is this a tournament where Daigo, you know, buckles up and he's he's sitting up and he's like, all right, I'm taking this shit. Is this that tournament or is this just another practice session for him? You know? That's what I wonder in, in his mind. Like, because Daigo tournament, like you see what he did to Tokido, right? He like when he wanted to destroy Tokido versus when you know, he meets him in a two out of three scenario and he's just trying to learn. Like, it's a very different Daigo. So, I don't I don't know what his focus is going into this, but depending on what it is, that will make the difference. You know, so if he's going into it with a studious attitude of just, you know, trying to learn and sacrificing guaranteed uh, victories, you know, and wins in situations, then I can see him potentially losing because he puts himself in a bad situation because he's trying to, you know, just grow. You know, and in a game like this where it's really volatile, it's a lot of damage, and there's just so many things coming at you at such fast rates, I can see him not even getting top 16 because of that. So, that's like my kind of wild card. It's really weird, but yeah. All right, so my I'm going to show a, a round, right? This is Vintage Daigo. I picked this round specifically because this is like the Daigo I expect that would get top 8. All right, so this is him against Fujimura. So, you see he starts off the round with that, with that upside down kick. He's really in tune with his opponent his rhythm and right there daigo with that confidence daigo uh, just demonstrating that confidence in that situation where he knows abuki you know has that advantage right but he is confident in the fact that he thinks abuki is going to try to become overzealous and try to get too greedy with the offense and you see how he challenges it with a low forward right and you see how he just jumps he, he's he believes in his reads that jump was because he read a v skill coming right so look at this. There's a low forward and he just jumps because at that spacing, and Abuki usually does level one V skill, the non-charge V skill, because it has a evasive hurtbox property on the hurtbox of the move. So she shifts back and she basically whiffs. She'll make moves whiff because she's moving away and retracting, and then she kind of whiff punishes you. And he knows that Fujimura centers his entire strategy around V skill. We're gonna get to that later on too. But he understands, and, and that's that's Daigo, in my opinion, in that, like, vintage form where he's, like, playing both characters and he's just very aware of your intentions, you know? Because he plays so fast when he's like that. That's why he's playing like this, you see? And he jumped again, and, and he got the read. And he was certain. Right. See, and, he, and he's... And, he, and when he's also winning, he does things that are very, uh, how would you say, multi-purpose. Like that, that Sabat kick that he just did there, like, it's so good because it moves him forward. He knows that at that range that he just entered when he did the back dash right there, that at that range, or that jump back rather, that range is the range that Ibuki wants to do a jump EX kunai because it's the perfect spacing for a jump in, right? And usually Ibuki's want to mix in that jump in with the EX kunai, so... By him moving forward, he understands that 
this will cause that explosive part of the ex kunai to not hit him as you see it happens right here and it doesn't combo so now he's plus in a plus situation and he does it back to back situations he's gonna do it again you're gonna see it right here i'm pretty sure let's see where is it see and he does it again so that just shows you the intention like this isn't some make-believe game you know some people just they don't see these things but he is doing this on purpose and that is if he plays like this in all of his matchups that he encounters throughout the weekend while also conserving you know that mental energy and stamina of course because it is going to be a long weekend i can see him beating everybody that he comes across and i can see daigo being the evo 2018 world champion all right nice see and he was confident still had that presence of mind even though he got hit he understood what was the best possible answer in that situation so that is that was pretty good Christy told me he thinks Abuki V Trigger 2 makes her top 5 with Kim. Yeah, I could see that. Her V Trigger 2 is really good. I definitely can see that. Alright, so now we are going to move on. Let's move on to our next player. Who do you guys think the next player is? I'm gonna give you guys a couple seconds. Alright, drum roll. It is MOV. Man, let me tell you guys. MOV is strangely like the best player in the world for like five minutes when he wants to. I don't understand how he does it, but he does it. It's ridiculous. You said Fujimori. You think I'm going to put the most obvious? Nah, I'm not putting Fujimori up there right away. That's too obvious. I got to have fun with you guys. But MOV, this dude is like, he's ridiculous. His, his neutral, his decision making, which I, is, I think is the exact reason why he's going to get top eight. Uh, I think that's what sets him apart from a lot of players is that his the the decisions he makes in neutral and on defense it's just like otherworldly. It's like wow, why would you do that? I understand why you do that when you take the time to assess and just look at all the meters, the positioning, the, the character matchup, the story, the narrative between him and his opponent. All these elements they add up and he just calculates it so quickly and it's like whoa, you know what I'm saying? And it's it's so dope, man. I think that. We're not, I'm not even including the fact that he got top eight at the first two Evos for Street Fighter V. That's also another reason. I think he's doing it again. He's going for the three P. I think he's definitely going to get top eight. He's just like so good at this. I don't know what it is about him, but he's just like rips off his chest and he just has the S on it. I'm like, okay. All right. That's how you feel in MOV. When Dai goes assertive, he seems to make everyone uncomfortable just like against Tokido first attempt. Yeah, I agree. I agree, bro. So... The reasons why I would say that, of course, him getting top eight at every single iteration of Street Fighter V at Evo, he's gone top eight at. All right, so there's that. Um, his highest placing was the first Evo where he got fifth, and or was it fifth or fourth? I'm pretty sure it was fifth. I think he went 0 and two out of uh, top eight winners, but he definitely placed lower last year. He got seventh. He lost immediately to, I believe, Takeuchi. Um, I think so. I believe so. But yeah so yeah oh and i think he also actually got top eight at evo japan i might be bugging you guys can probably correct me on that but yeah i think he's got literally top eight at all three evos in this game which i forgot that was evo japan so that's even more reason for me to be like all right all right i get it you're gonna cash in your evo piggy bank card Woo! and just go straight to top eight like we know you are so yeah um so yeah i think that and i think his decision making helps him create this crazy form of consistency and i'm going to tell you guys why if you watch when we watch this video you guys are going to see that mov has this really uncanny ability to just put himself to, to avoid being put in bad situations he's so good at it and i think it has to be a third strike thing because he just is so aware of so many different elements at the same time and a lot of players struggle to do, to do that they struggle to have that mental juggle you know between different things like that and he is exceptional at it he he is like he'll have his intention set on a particular whiff punish rhythm and his opponent will do something completely different out of the loop right and he just sees it and he's like oh sh oh shit you just jumped at me um let me not sit here let me not try to contest it i'm gonna move like his movement he just knows how to get in and out of bad situations like it, it's like he knows how to put you in an adva adv advantageous situation but he also knows how to remove himself from one you know and it's just like it's just a beautiful thing to watch and i think that is what's going to help him have that consistency because when he goes against players that might be better at the game 
the fact that he makes better decisions will set him apart, you know, and that'll help him create this like this bubble, like this protective shield that that, well, that might frustrate people because they'll feel like he's so slippery and difficult to pin down, and it's kind of true to an extent because it that's what's happening, you know. Um, so yeah, as far as cons, I struggle to believe he'll do it again because of the season. Like this is probably the most explosive season yet. Um, and well, maybe not. Season two point five was pretty ridiculous. Especially with the scaling and stuff. So I'll take that back. But in relation to where Chun Li is on the tier list, like she's not explosive enough, in my opinion, to like you know, he has to play so well all the way through to the end of a match. He cannot let his foot up on off of the gas like the other characters. Like other characters can kind of play lazy in the opening and mid-game. Uh they you know, they can just kind of like half-ass things. But Chun Li, she has to really be foot on the pedal all the way through the match and just be disciplined all the way throughout. You know, she can't really let up. Her V trigger is not cheap. It's not crazy. It's not like that thing where she can fall back on. So if she's down on health, it's not like MOV can be like, oh, all I have to do is make you block this and then ha ha ha, you're about to lose 400 damage in, in a span of seven seconds. You know, it's just not happening. So what's up, Black Skills? So that's my thing and on top of that she struggles against the other top tier more popular characters right like she's not top tier but i'm saying the, the top tier characters so happen to be popular akuma right because of his zoning kami because of her mobility and it's hard for chun li to pin her down into a footsies battle because kami has the speed and the reach and the mobility on top of that to fight chun so chun is kind of spread thin in terms of her focus and then, of course, Akuma. Akuma gives her a hard time because of his damage output, his conversions, right? His V trigger comebacks, like, and his his uh his ability to approach. He has the aerial approach, like Cami, right, with the air fireball. So Chun has to really be on her A game to be really effective in that matchup. All right, so that's my thing. All right, so let's watch this clip and let's watch MOV. This is this is the top shelf MOV right here in action versus Fino. Mov right. was going to wake up something, and that's what he did. He gave him ex thunder legs. Yeah, very patient, good presence of mind. All right, he's willing to challenge that confidence. He has that. All right, he's willing to put himself in a bad situation. That minus two because he's confident. He's he believes in his heart. Hey, you're going to tech, so he will put his read first and foremost. All right, and then he understands right away. All right, I'm in a bad situation. I obviously, don't want to be here. Right. I'm trying to go in with that. Okay, and again, that's that confidence. He thinks that he's going to walk up and try to repressure or whatever. See, he keeps contesting. Now, you see that dash in? That, that dash in after the contest, like, when he jumped at him, was just so dope. Like, look how fast it happened. Look at that. See, he whiffed a back fair. So most people, they have that instinct to, when they whiff a button, they block because they think the opponent wants to whiff punish. But not everybody wants to whiff punish, especially in a game like this. Where whiff punishing, it, you have to be really on top of things to whiff punish consistently. You have to be, like, sharp, right? So, he is aware of that. And he understands there are other elements outside of, you know, maybe what his pre his preferences are in footies. He would like to whiff punish. But other players, they don't necessarily have to whiff punish. And Nikali isn't really going to whiff punish all the time. You know, so he sees that that movement is going to be... A thing and he immediately committed to that dash so that was impressive that's gonna be huge problem now because mov down in life all right this is gonna help right now go look at this again he's just so aware getting out that easily the throw corner control yes awesome and then of course he has the swagger doses chunli combos <laughs> the fancy way oh my god james Jen. i love you but yeah so I see him doing some some really good damage this weekend. I could definitely see him top eight. So I'd, I'd say Daigo and MOV. Those are my two of eight so far. All right, guys. So we are now 25% of the way through. So next, who do I got? Who do you guys think I got next? Yeah, his spacing is, is superb. Like, he if you're not aware of spacing, he can really beat you just solely off of the fact, you know, that you just keep hanging yourself. So, my next pick is going to be... Brrrr... Alright, of course. I mean, I feel like everybody has them in top 8. You know, and... Like, I, I watch them, man, especially because I've been playing Kabuki more, and I'm like, wow, you... You really 
just he just knows how to exercise his character in the engine man like he is a robot you know he like knows how to just be systematic i think that is so important for consistency in this game that's something that i'm learning how to do is to just be systematic and just literally a plus b equals c and just rinse wash repeat he is a robot like he will just cycle between options and he doesn't have to go outside of those options unless he feels like it's necessary right so i have fujimori on top eight number one because of his optimization his optimization is i think like him and punk their optimization is like the standard in my opinion like they optimize like if they sneeze on you they're doing 200 damage guaranteed i'm like whoa bro i just want you to say god bless you and you like doing all this damage on me right they make sure every hit counts and that is so important in this game because think about it guys if you don't make your hits count that is an extra opportunity for your opponent to make a comeback that's an extra opportunity for them to block a medium and get that great damage and get that b trigger you know what i'm saying like these guys make sure to take advantage and that's what i think is gonna help propel fujimori to top eight of course he got top eight after his first evo also and um now he has a lot more experience under his belt arguably a better character than nash uh and you know he 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 has redefined the character his he exercises the and he really takes control and capitalizes on the engine and he knows how to do it he's really good at it you know he strategizes around the v skill around the v trigger and he makes that uh, his focus riddler eddie thank you for following i appreciate it brother so he he knows how to prioritize you know and and he doesn't he doesn't become like like uh how do you say tunnel vision he he's very open-minded and i he can adapt he's really fluid and, and it's dope uh he he can beat you multiple ways with the pookie he can beat you with v trigger and without v trigger i think that's really crucial if you can't beat somebody with and without v trigger you're consistently significantly drops my opinion he can beat you with and without it because he has access to the ex kunai 50 50 so he knows how to set that up and then he also has the multiple ways of going into v trigger too and then he has the plethora of mix-ups that he probably doesn't even know how to block right so that i think is going to increase his chances significantly of getting it to top eight all right so i'd say that um his optimi his optimization making every hit count his uh his strategy inside and outside of v trigger and then also his sequencing Yo, know, his sequence i'm gonna show you guys this round right this round he actually loses but because of how robotic he is i want to show you guys this because i don't think you guys have seen this but this is how he plays so fast and how he makes decisions so quickly is because he's done this so many times that he understands what to do when an opponent does something so this is the level that we should aspire to get at in terms of being systematic but of course learning to be fluid you know a la like a like a daigo you know or um who else is another fluid player like uh i go infiltrations he, he he can be he can be fluid i think he's more robotic though but but yeah so oh momochi is definitely fluid that's a perfect example but so yeah we're gonna see that um i'd say as far as cons though like the one reason why i could bet against fujimori getting into top eight is because that once he becomes uh when he's on the defensive he becomes really active and that's why he got really blown up by smug because he kept trying to contest smug on the defense you know and and that leads to a lot of damage and ibuki only has like what 900 health i believe so you know in a two out of three in an environment like this with so many different playstyles from around the world playing characters differently with through their own interpretations that you might not have experienced and you're trying to contest damage can add up really quick you know so that's the one thing i'm i'm kind of hesitant about for him is just re-watching him and you might see it is like when he gets on the defensive that he just starts to really play as if he's still on the offensive that might be his thing like where he just knows he needs that one hit and the right type of opponent can use that against him so let's get into it so i want you guys to watch after he lands i believe crouching strong into dp right not this but right after this watch how systematic he is look at this look at that he's still in a system 
you know how he's still in the system? He just, he dashed up. Look at when Cammy jumped, right? Look, he dashed up and he still did walk up strong. That's how like his brain is like so robotic that for the past nine seconds, since that moment of that crushing strong, he was literally in a flow chart. Isn't that crazy? Like, let's watch this again. So again, right after the crouching strong with punish, I have to walk back. All right. Look at this. To build the VC seal and then to build up his pressure. And then he's doing this. And then he's doing this to potentially beat the counter jab. Like, it's just so much going on, man. Like, he just, he just threw so many things at his opponent, man. And he's just like, all right, this didn't work next option. This, this, this didn't work next option. Okay, let me upgrade my position. Let me upgrade my, my meter. Let me do this. Let me do that. And it was just like, wow. And and that situation of him, you know, dashing up and still getting hit was really funny to me. I laughed when I saw that because I was like, wow, this dude's really, like, focused, you know? I guess that's where his tunnel vision is, is in his strategy. But, you know, everybody has a weakness. So. What's up, Richie? Ronan, thank you for tuning in, brother. But Zach, Bruce Lee said a rehearse routine like the flexibility to adapt. Yeah, for sure. But there is a time and a place for everything. You know what I'm saying? Like your greatest strengths can have subtle flaws and your greatest, you know, and your weaknesses can even have hidden strengths. So it's like, it's just a matter of timing, you know, because different things work on different people differently, you know, so that there are times when certain things won't work, but they will work on other occasions. So. And it's worked for him. I mean, he's consistently getting better, but that doesn't mean he shouldn't strive for growth, of course. But that's what's difficult. When you win too much, it gets really hard to notice where to improve, you know? So that's why it's good to lose if you're trying to grow. So. All right. So we just finished the Fujimura. So now, my next player. All right. Let's see. Be Bonfire. Thank you for following. I appreciate it. So I will say my next player. I don't have footage. I couldn't find footage of, of, of the character I wanted, right? But my next player that I have getting top eight is... What do you guys think? I'll give you guys 10 seconds. Boom. Okay, so my next player. I actually have Momochi. So, I know Momochi isn't like... He isn't on the hottest of streaks lately right but i think based off of his history and it, it, it really depends on his cody man but let me just let me get into the pros right i'm saying momochi can get top eight i think he's gonna get top eight so my reason is all right so he is by far one of the fastest at, at uh, like adapting period in the scene like his adaptation speed is so fast it's ridiculous and the the secret to it i have to ask it i don't know because it just, it's just ridiculous right but he can adapt so quickly and it's like damn emoji can can a brother get some privacy in my brain please like he is that good so i think that he in this type of tournament and he's proven it by being the champion in 2015 or is it 2014? It was definitely 20... 2015, because Luffy won 2014. But when he won 2015 at Evo, he just glided through because he was able to break people down so quickly. You know, and that is something that Momochi excels at. He can figure you out. He knows your birthday, your social security number. Before you even shook your hand, like, at the table, he, he already knows who you are. He'll tell you your favorite color. He'll tell you what you ate for breakfast. For some reason, he just knows your DNA strands. Like, I don't know how he does it, but he does it. And I think that is a key advantage that he has to get into top eight. So I think his ability to adapt is going to, I think it could propel him into a top eight situation. All right. Of course, he's also a previous Evo champ. So he understands what it takes. He has that stamina. He's proven it. All right. Because the Evo that he won, I'm pretty sure that Evo had like over 2,300 uh, participants or something like that. That was like the most for Street Fighter 4 ever. So I'm, I'm certain that he still has that all right so my thing though like the one th thing that kind of hurt you know irks me is just i i don't know how how much time he's had with cody because like 
he can use that to his advantage of course but then what about the players that have the characters that are automatically at advantage like a guile right like daigo with guile if he runs into daigo daigo is going to more likely be in a situation that he is at advantage hence why a character is at advantage if you didn't know this a character is usually said to be at advantage because they're the one that is dictating the situation all right so from the start of the match guile is at advantage because he's at the spacing he wants to be at cody isn't right so it becomes this thing where is momochi going to be comfortable being in situations that other people are more comfortable in you know with that character because you know cody doesn't have a three frame button he doesn't have an invincible attack attack outside of super so it's like i don't know that's something that i'm i'm, I'm second guessing like you know maybe yesterday i was thinking about putting shao high there but i was like nah, 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 i'm not gonna put shao high there you know but I'm gonna keep him there. I'm gonna keep him there. I have him there for that. You know, I think the the pros outweigh the cons in that situation because he has the advantage of Cody also. Because how many people can say they have that experience against a uh, uh, a Cody with that type of discipline? You know, because he's gonna introduce some stuff, some approaches, some strategies and tactics. People are just not gonna be prepared for. So that's what I think about Momochi in, in terms of um, getting into top eight. All right. So my next player. All right. I have. The man with the business suit, all right? My homie, Mr. Liquid Nemo. I have Nemo in here because Nemo is, he's ridiculous. He is that kid at recess that just wouldn't stop running around in circles even though everybody was already inside in class. So like, he is that type of guy. I think he is just, he is like the wild card of the tournament for me because Nemo can literally not make it out of pools, but then he can make a top three. Like, he, he is that ridiculous, man. You know, what's up, AJ? Yeah, Nemo, man. Yo, listen, Nemo, I'm going to break it down to you right now, okay? So, Nemo, first and foremost, he has by far, like, he has elite S plus tier offense. His offense is phenomenal. He, he like, just optimizes so well, right? Him and Fujimori, how could I forget Nemo in terms of optimization? Him, Fujimura, and Punk are like... Oh, and Sako, of course, right? Those four are like just galaxy brain, like, eh, in terms of optimizing. Nemo, every single hit, if he has V-Trigger, he could just turn that into potentially 500 damage. It doesn't matter if it was a light kick because of how he can just force things and just... He's ridiculous. Yeah, his his neutral his neutral in terms of like his spacing and stuff isn't the greatest, um, but his offense, it, he is so fast and his movement is so weird that he can literally, he'll overwhelm anybody potentially, you know, once he gets into that, that advantageous positioning where he, where Nemo can really get started, he can really put people on tilt very fast. And you're going to see him do that against Tokido right here. You see how fast, I wish I could show you, I have it filtered out, but how, how short this match is. Let's see, you guys can see it. I don't know if you can see it, but it's four minutes and five seconds. This, this, there's only two matches and it's four minutes and five like yo he just blitzed through tokido as if tokido was some amateur that just stepped up to the arcade machine at a laundry mat and just wanted to play he just makes him look like a rookie and it's it's his offense he i've i've watched interviews in the past where people say nemo's really weird to play against these are japanese players i forgot who specifically said it but they said that he is very unorthodox I know oh, he said it about himself. He considered himself unorthodox, but somebody else said that he can put you on tilt so fast, you know, because he just never lets up and he can just adjust just enough to throw somebody off. And you're going to see it here. And I think that Nemo has a great chance at, at doing that. Um, and because of how his offense is, he's really good at taking somebody's attention and diverting it or noticing when somebody's too focused on something else. So he kind of attacks around and behind you know imagine this is metal gear and you know how you have the spotlight nemo is the shadow he will go into the shadow and hit you and you're like the spotlight you're like i can't see anything what's going on that's nemo nemo is the guy in the shadows that is just beating you up and you don't even know what's going on until the match is over all right so he's that guy that sends you home and before you even realize why you lost so my con my negative as far as to nemo getting into top eight is that when he is like uh when he loses confidence defensively like it's because he's confused so like if you ever watch back to his matches against cj truth against mena 
he gets like very flustered because something i don't know like something strange is happening and he kind of just loses that confidence and you know like how he originally played and then he just dies like he'll start getting jumped in on back to back like people just exploit weaknesses that otherwise he would usually cover up um because i think he gets too asphyxiated on on whatever it is that he focuses on and gets that tunnel vision and then he weakens his quality of play in neutral and his neutral is not is already not the greatest in my opinion so you know but it's because of how fast he plays that he plays the street fighter 5 neutral but yeah you know like his, he's always been a movement based player if you watch his Valento, like he's just really good at getting in and out of ranges and and just really confusing people then that's how he gets started right so let's watch this all right okay so he's playing slow right now right until he gets that See, and look at that. Now he's already started. And he's like, all right, I just got the blocks and this is what I want. See, and he's willing to make those type of reads. Look at that. Immediately understands, I'm not going to get much off of this. And he just commits into offense. Like, that That against, like, you know, that's what Mena capitalized on was that he would keep trying to get in. And obviously, there was that, the factor that Mena would capitalize on Urien's weaknesses in terms of his anti-airs at certain spacing. But he he took advantage of his you know his, his uh, overzealousness and he converted that into offense. But this is a normal round. Like you see how fast this is. Like look at this commits right away. See like that's Nemo. Nemo can put you on tilt because he's nutty. He's a calculated nut. It's 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 very strange. You know even people that probably played against him so many times they can get thrown off because of it. So so yeah. All right. If it is his day, he will break out. Yeah, for sure. He's not making it out of pools. Yeah, he can make it to South Three. Great OS. Yo, it's weird, but he's that one guy that can definitely do that. It's it's really strange, but it's true. Jims, what's up, man? Rarely catch your streams. Just want to say thanks for the YouTube footsies videos. Yeah, no problem, man. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You know, let people know. Just share and just and just let people know that that it exists because not a lot of people have access to that type of information you know so people get really discouraged because they, they feel like they're not leveling up and they just don't know what to focus on so that's what it's really about is just getting that mindset you know it's not just to to rely on me but to to learn how to rely on yourself that's what i'm just trying to build you guys into into your own type of leaders in the fgc right he goes from a low level footsie game that explodes when he smells blood exactly that's that's a perfect way to put it bro Oh yeah, the the losers run. I was there for that too. I was at that qualifying tournament. Lost to two Eds. I I was not too happy about that. No, actually, I lost to an Ed. I lost to Dominion, then I lost to Fruit from I think Kuwait. He played Ed, and then he went Laura. And I was like, oh my god. And he just like lured me, and I was like, but yeah. I like that when he has to slow down and makes him hesitant. He's like an avalanche. Yeah, for sure. I believe in your black skills. Just gotta, you gotta sabot kick your way to victory with DJ, you feel me? Alright, cool. So let's move on to the next, next demonstration. So this is, what, what, what is this? This is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's our sixth, sixth player. So number six is uh, the other guy on the other side of this. Our little homie, Tokido. So, Tokido... I don't really have to say much. He's a reigning champ for a reason. He won last year, and he is super consistent. He is always a threat any tournament he walks into. People are saying he's top eight, pretty much guaranteed, right? His work ethic is it sets him apart from so many players because not only does he you know play, but it's his quality of training that is the difference maker for him. He is willing to get those sets in and, and just learn and grow you know he doesn't just do the same thing every day because if you keep doing the same thing every day it just turns into you sharpening your execution that's all it is at that point but he's constantly ch challenging himself and he's very studious he's super well-rounded because he understood his limitations as a player from the excuse me from the past he understood he was a technical player that was known to abuse the engine and then he went and evolved and learned neutral he learned how to zone he learned how to do these xyz 
elements of you know legendary players from legendary players and he became his own you know so he has obviously that technical aspect still down he can put you in situations that favor him solely based off of the engine he knows how to capitalize on the game he understands street fighter 5 so much better than 99 percent of the players that play this game i'd say you know probably 99.9 to be honest but he, he knows how to leverage that he knows the situations his awareness like riddler said He's so aware, so alert. He understands what situations he wants to be in, what he doesn't want to be in. He understands how to get in and out of the situations, how to have variety behind his approaches. He's just so well-rounded. Tokido is the embodiment of a perfect, not perfect, of course, because that doesn't exist, but just somebody attaining perfection as a fighting game player, you know, because he can do it all, you know. And I think that that is going to be something that he leans on is that he, he can have that confidence in his work ethic and how he studies and his experience and understanding of the game okay um so because he's so studious it makes him very difficult to surprise you know so that's something that a lot of players usually use in tournaments like this they use that element of surprise but it's gonna be very difficult to do that on tokido because you know when something new is introduced to the game he's on top of it Right, because he wants to understand not only the character, but what can that character teach him about Street Fighter, about himself that he can go and apply, you know, to himself. So D Man and Dom, thank you for tuning in, my brothers. I appreciate you guys as always. For sure. Right. So it's gonna be hard to to introduce something that he hasn't calculated. It's not, you know, in his expectations. Like some sort of X factor that is outside of Tokido's awareness. That's gonna be very difficult. So I think in order to beat him, you have to beat him. And how many people can straight up beat Tokido? You know, that's that's gonna be very difficult for whoever comes across his path. So I have him in top eight. All right. Um I will say this though. The reason why I don't think he could get top eight is that I think he struggles a lot against momentum. And if you look at how he lost to Mena and how he damn near lost to Smug, like, I think momentum is huge against Tokido. Like, I think, like, it, it turns out if, if something ends up beating him and it's outside of his logic, he has a hard time recuperating. So, like, I think oh, another prime example, CEO last year. I don't know if you guys remember this. Do you remember who he lost to in pools? He lost to Dan Slip, Okay. Dan Slip was up, was down a match, and then Dan Slip won four rounds straight. And that seems to be the theme of Tokido's losses. Like, you even just saw it with Nemo. Like, when he loses, he loses, like, convincingly. You know, it's really strange. Oh, he lost to CJ Truth, too, at, um... I think it was CEO. I don't know if it was CEO, but he lost to CJ Truth at a recent tournament also. But, yeah, it's, it's the same thing. Like, he gets... It's just like momentum gets used against him, and it seems like he has a hard time fighting, finding his footing. I think that's like one of his weaknesses all right so that could be a thing where you know maybe he comes across some player that he wasn't prepared for or, or play style he wasn't prepared for you know like and they just smoke right through him and all of a sudden he's just out 2-0 in losers you know like that's something i can see happening and i wouldn't be surprised just based off of the the recent history of his losses uh, that's just a common theme that i've i've uh pinpointed so, of course, it could not happen. He could still get top eight. I think he's going to get top eight, but yeah. Um, and let's see. Okay, so the next example we have. I don't have an example uh, in terms of footage, but I have Kazunoko getting top eight. Gasp, right? Let me tell you why. Kazunoko is, is like that wild card that he just shows up when like when you don't expect he just wins things you're like what do you do why what i didn't even know you were here i thought you were home right he goes and wins ceo for uh dragon ball fighters and it's just like he just does that i'm like wow you know and i i expect him to do the same thing here he can just come out at any given point and just blow through competition it, it, and he just leaves a path of bodies on his way it, it's really strange but he does it earl thank you for tuning in brother appreciate it but I see Kazunoko getting top eight because the thing is, right? Kazunoko is a multiple game champion, all right? And he is prepared for this. He has the stamina to play multiple games. He definitely has the stamina to play and make it far in a tournament like Evo, all right? He's already done it. He made it top eight last year also. So there's that. I see him doing it. Um, 
he is really consistent at these high stakes tournaments he just shines for some reason he just steps he steps it up a notch and there's also the other things too where he's playing cammy cammy's top tier i think she's the best character in the game he plays cammy right so he's playing cammy and not only does he play cammy but he is the standard for her dive kicks when people talk about dive kicks they still talk about kazunoko like you know he might not be the best cammy but they still look at him for a certain level of cammy play and that's the dive kick so he is still capable of capitalizing on her strengths and launching himself all the way through to a top eight position i can definitely see that and especially in a tournament like this and then of course kazunoko he is his mind games but like he can really put people on tilt like if you're not ready for kazunoko he is one of those players that you will be so flustered and confused by you're like yo what the hell just happened to me this is this is obnoxious all right so i can definitely see him getting top eight and um but one of the reasons why i don't think he'll get it like i think he'll get top eight but if he doesn't get it i believe it's because he spreads himself too thin because he's playing three games at evo so he could potentially get top eight at three games he can get top eight at this game street fighter 5 he can get top eight at dragon ball fighters which he's probably like 90 percent certain he's gonna get that and then he can also get top eight at guilty gear so it's like damn cause like what what if he's not practicing this game, you know, as much as the other two, you know? Or he's probably practicing Dragon Ball Fighters the most because maybe he thinks he has the biggest chance of winning that, you know? So, I don't know. I do see his replays. He does play the game every day. But to the quality, I don't know. That can be something that suffers from playing multiple games. You know what I'm saying? So, that's just something that I kind of wonder about. And that makes me a little bit hesitant on just putting that stamp on his top eight so, uh, like solidification. But... I don't, I, I'm gonna bet the money that he's gonna get top eight. All right. So so far, these are the seven that I have. I have Daigo, Mov, Fujimura, Momochi, Nemo, Tokido, and Kazunoko. All right. And my last player. This might throw some people off, but something just tells me that he's gonna get top eight. And I think. I, I I have a good I have a gut feeling that he's gonna do it. I think that the last spot in top eight is gonna go to who do you guys think? I didn't know he was going to Evo. I think it's hot stepper, goddammit. Two two that's my homie, he is gonna get top eight. But I think it is going to be I see, I see Sian, I see Punk, I see Infiltration, I see... Rightwell says Punk. Thank you for tuning in, Rightwell. Punk, mm, Snuff, you, up to Snuff? You could probably get top eight, maybe. Daigo, I already said Daigo. Do? Nope. I have Problem X. That's why I ignored you, Chizo. <laughs> but I have Problem X. I don't have Infiltration getting top 8. I know that sounds crazy, but... Yeah, I have uh, Problem X. This is uh, probably going to be the, the more... You know... Uh, disregarded pick from uh, whoever's tuning in. But I think Problem X is going to get top 8. Because I think that not many players are prepared for a Bison of his caliber and the way he plays bison like he might not be the best bison i think he's the best bison but he might not be the best bison right but his decisions and the way he plays might be enough to throw people off you know and obviously he has abigail he has a really strong abigail on the side but i i think his bison is what's going to propel him all like that far in the tournament so he is he is so good at understanding his opponent's weaknesses and he loves to exploit them like that's why he plays multiple characters so you know he, he his neutral revolves around that that weak point in his opponent's philosophy their strategy whatever but he's really good at indicating it pinpointing it and then attacking it like rigorously i think problem x can do really really well at evil and i i honestly do believe that it was between him I know, like, I had it couldn't have been another Asian player. I was like, it has to be him, Mena, or Punk. I don't know if Du will get that far, 
but I mean, of course, you know, I like my friends to get that far, right? But yeah, I, I think I think between him, Mena, and Punk uh, had the biggest chances outside of the you know Asian players. So that's that's why I leaned more towards him though, because I just felt like he, I don't know, his preparation and just yeah, his his bison is just another level, man. He's just so just alert you know and of the minute things and his philosophy the things we've talked about he's taught me so much too like when we hung out and and we kicked it and and the the things that he's told me about man i'm just like wow this is like really enlightening you know and it's simple and, and that's why it works like he tells you these simple things like he focuses on simple things and by focusing on simple things it allocates his brain to do the complex things you know you don't want to focus on complex things primarily because then it makes it a lot more difficult you know what i'm saying so stanley yo zap aren't you going to evil aren't you staying in Vu's room no i'm uh i could not afford it this year but i'll be there next year but it's all good so yeah what's up stanley but yeah ether i definitely think he's the best bison right well see he agrees look at that right well has written it into law but yeah i think that he's i think he's the best so let's watch this. This is a this is a pretty good uh, indica indication of a problem X round. All right. So let's tune into this. All right. So you know Bison has really slow walk speed, but he's willing to to still you know use his patience and move into those ranges. But he also can attack into ranges. He understands that you know his opponent's movement. You know because he played Seth. He played all these mobile characters like Viper and stuff. So he's really sure and aware of movement also and you see and he's willing to block like you see how he just got shimmied like that and, and he just he's not phased <laughs> and he still plays the same like look at his health he's still playing with that same discipline regardless of him being down 50 percent health oh god what the hell just happened oh this just froze okay Yeah, and that's that's death. Okay, there you go. Is that stuff? Oh my god, what the hell is going on with this? Oh, Let me see. Can I find another problem X? Let's see if I can watch another problem X. Uh, hmm. What is another good problem X? Oh, it's in versus Ada? Right. Let's go to a random round. So like, even though he gets scrambled in this game, composure is really important. I think that's something that Problem X has is that he doesn't he doesn't crack. He can still lose, obviously. He can still get opened up, but he doesn't he doesn't dive away too much from his gameplay. You know, even though he's losing right now, he's still you see he's still playing the same approach in neutral. I don't know if he wins this round, but the fact of the matter is that he still maintains that confidence in his play. See, look at that. Usually, players, when they're losing like this in neutral, their quality of play starts to suffer in certain areas. But you still see him being on top of his air to airs. You know, like, even though he's down, like, he still maintains that zen-like confidence. You know? So yeah, he doesn't seem desperate at all. What's up, Super Breezy? Thank you for tuning in. But yeah, exactly. That's a good way to put it. He doesn't seem desperate. He just, he knows what situations are worth winning. And from talking with him, it's, that's exactly what he conveyed to me. It's just you have to know which battles are worth fighting, you know? And that, I think, is a very important element in a tournament like this, you know? So I think that he has a great shot at uh, getting into top eight. So... Wow, guys, it's been uh, exactly an hour. So, boom. That's what I'm talking about. Word. But, guys, thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. As always, you know, um, I I love doing this. This is, this is great. Simple as that. So, my top eight was Daigo, MOV, Fujimura, Momochi, Nemo, Tokido, Kazunoko, and Problem X to round out my top eight predictions for Evo. 
who do I have winning Evo now? Let me give you guys that. I'm gonna give you guys that really quick. Let's see. Hmm. 